Welcome back to Hungry for History. I hope you had a restful Thanksgiving weekend. In the last video, we discussed the origin and classification of pumpkins and how Native Americans used pumpkins in their diet. In today's video, we will continue to examine the history of pumpkins, but through the perspectives of the Europeans in the 16th and the 17th century. Let's get it started! <music> When the European explorers came to the Americas in the late 15th century, pumpkins had been a mainstay in the cuisines of indigenous North and South Americans. The Europeans find it interesting that Native Americans grow corn, beans, and pumpkins together in the same field. They were impressed by the size of pumpkins and the quality of fruits produced by a single plant. One explorer commented, quote, of one seed I have seen a hundred, much better than ours and lasting all the year, unquote. The Europeans did not adopt American Indian terms for pumpkin. Instead, they used botanical names of already known melons and gourds for the Native American fruit. The English word pumpkin originated from the French word pumpkin, which is derived from the Latin pepo and the Greek pepin meaning a melon or a gourd eaten when ripe. Pumpkin finally reached English as pumpkin after a series of evolution. English cookbooks published in the 17th century interchangeably used those two spellings. European explorers brought pumpkin seeds back to Europe and gave as exotic gifts to their royal sponsors. Pumpkins were cultivated in gardens solely for curiosity and the fruits were rare use for food. By the early 17th century, illustrations of pumpkins appeared in books, paintings, and frescoes in Europe. The earliest images of pumpkins in Europe were found in the French Queen Anne of Brittany's prayer book. Jean Bourdichon, who was a court painter, did illustrations of over 300 plant species for the Queen's prayer book. One of the illustrations was Cucurbita pepper pumpkin. The pear-shaped fruits have greenish, broad, and narrow stripes, which are common among the wild and ornamental Curcubita pepper. Mr. Boudichon probably drew the idea from the leaf specimens found in royal gardens. Italian artist Giuseppe Archimboldo is well known for composing clusters of fruit and vegetables to create human heads. The figure of Autumn has a pumpkin head, and in Vertumnus, the Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II, who was portrayed as Vertumnus, the god of seasonal change and plant growth in Roman mythology, has a pumpkin chest. The use of pumpkin for the poetry can be interpreted as a display of the emperor's wealth, power, and his ambition to dominate the new world. English settlers who came to North America in the early 17th century suffered from starvation. They were not familiar with abundant food resources that Native Americans had thrived on. Edward Johnson, an English colonist who came to Massachusetts in 1630, noted, quote, The want of English grain, wheat, barley, and rye proved a sore affliction to some stomachs, who could not live upon Indian bread and water. Yet were they compelled to it till cattle increased and their plows could but go. Instead of apples and pears, they had pumpkins and squashes of diverse kinds." Unquote. Mr. Johnson reminds us that early colonists were used to a diet of European grains, vegetables, and fruits, but the lack of familiar ingredients compelled them to accept the Native American pumpkins and the squashes. Native Americans taught colonists how to incorporate pumpkins into their diet. Pumpkins proved easy to grow, store, and usually have high yields. It did not take colonists much longer than their European contemporaries to eat pumpkins. They actually become heavily rely on it as a food source, as evidenced by this colonial song dating from 1630. Quote, instead of pottage and puddings and custard and pies, our pumpkins and parsnips are common supplies. We have pumpkins at morning and pumpkins at noon. If it were not for pumpkins, we should be undone. 
unquote. Pumpkins were baked, fried, mashed, roasted, and stewed, eaten as a side dish to meats. That old New England standing dish was to stew pumpkins, beans, and corn in a pot on an open fire. Dried pumpkins were boiled down to a thick sauce and used as a sweetener. Pumpkins were also used as cooking vessels. A popular way to prepare pumpkins was to scoop out their seeds, fill the cavity with either sweet or savory fillings, and cook them near a fire. Pumpkins remained as food of necessity for English colonists in Plymouth and Jamestown colonies until they had more than enough to eat. Once the colonies become established and the population grow from a few thousand to more than 100,000, international trees brought in cattle, pigs, grains, and vegetables from Europe to satisfy colonists' European stomach. By the late 17th century, pumpkins already became a food of the poor and the livestock. English botanist John Parkinson wrote that, quote, the poor of the cities as well as the country people don't eat thereof as a dainty dish. But you may be wondering how did pumpkins rise from the food of the poor to the cult status it has in the US today? That's what we are going to talk about in the next episode, which is also the last episode of the history of pumpkins. A popular way to cook pumpkin in the 17th century in England was to stuff pumpkin with apple and milk. When writing about the use of pumpkins, John Parkinson mentioned, quote, they use likewise to take out the inner watery substance with the seeds and fill up the place with peppings and having laid on the cover which they cut off from the top. To take out the pulp, they bake them together. Another English botanist, John Amber Crombie, noted, quote, in England, they are seldom used till grown to maturity. When making a hole on one side and divest the pulp of all the seeds, they mix it with sliced apples, milk, sugar, and some grated nutmeg and thus make a kind of pudding prepared in the shell and bake it in the oven, which is commonly called pumpkin pie, for which purpose the plants are cultivated by the country people in many parts of England." Unquote. From Mr. Abercrombie's description, we learned that pumpkin stuffed with apples and milk was the precursor of modern pumpkin pie. Next, I'm going to show you how to make the pumpkin pie precursor. First, rinse your pumpkin with water and dry it with a towel. Cut the top off the sugar pumpkin. Scoop out the seeds and strings with a metal spoon. Be careful, don't poke through the shell. To make this recipe, you need one cup milk, two tablespoons sugar or more if you like it sweeter, half cup sliced apples, two eggs, some carrots, and the cinnamon powder, and of course the hollowed pumpkin. Mix apple and carrots together and add them to the pumpkin. In a mixing bowl, crack two eggs and beat them well before you add in the milk. Next, add in sugar and one teaspoon cinnamon powder. Transfer the liquid mix to a measuring cup and slowly pour into the pumpkin cavity. Fill to about half inch from the top of the rim. The egg mixture will expand and rise to the edge of the rim during baking. As for the rest of the egg mixture, we can pour it into a cupcake baking pan and bake it with the pumpkin. Wrap the pumpkin with a piece of aluminum foil. Set the pumpkin and the lid in a roasting pan. Pour enough water to cover the bottom of the pan. Bake for one and a half hour. Take out the pumpkin top and the cupcake pan after 40 minutes. When the time is done, remove the pumpkin from oven and allow it to completely cool before serving. You can also leave it in the fridge overnight before you serve it next day. I left the pumpkin bake in the fridge overnight. Finally, it's time to try it out. Take off the lid and cut from the side like cutting a cake. Wow, look at the white fillings. It looks good. The first bite, I tried to get the currants, the milk, and the apple, and the pumpkin all together in one bite. It tastes like the apple custard. It's very creamy. 
and it has a slight pumpkin flavor. I really like the combination of apple and the carrots. When you serve it like this in a wedge, you can sprinkle some cinnamon and maple syrup to make it sweeter. I will definitely make this recipe for next year's Thanksgiving. Hopefully by then the virus is gone. It will be fun to share this pumpkin dish with family and friends. That's all I have for you today. If you like today's video, please like it and share it. I will see you soon. Bye bye.